Hi there, I'm Tammy and this is Michael and today we're going to be picking up in Thessalonians in chapter 2 uh, verse 8. That's where we're going to be picking up today. But before we get started, Michael is going to lead us with a prayer. So we'll just say a prayer and uh, we repent in Yeshua Messiah, Jesus Christ's perfect name and we pray for wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge and strength in Yeshua Messiah's perfect, precious name. And like Tammy said, we um, we started a new book yesterday, the last lesson, it's the book of Thessalonians from the Apostle Paul, a letter that he wrote, and uh, always, um, it's not man's imagination, it's divine revelation, Paul's instructed to write, and he did like so, and we, are, we got up to chapter 2, verse 8, right, Tammy, and Tammy's mm -hmm. going to start reading the verses, and we'll just have a little chat about each verse, go ahead, Tim. Okay, chapter chapter 2, verse 8. So being affectionately desirous of you, we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls, because ye were dear unto us. So this is, uh, this is still following this long, big greeting, this big introduction, and Paul is very happy and pleased with what's the seed planting he's done and has the many member bodies growing and here we have an expression of true Christian love also our own souls because you were dear unto us listen very carefully so being affectionately desirous of you we were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only let's just but also our own souls this this strictly means no Bible thumping. This strictly means discipline in this word. No concessions to please man. Let's just go ahead, Tammy. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail, for laboring night and day, because we would not be chargeable unto any of you, we preached unto you the gospel of God. Now, you know, me and Tammy have done Book of Mark and Book of Matthew, and God does not send out beggars. Paul was not there trying to make some loose change and pocket a few bucks and get some pension plan going. He's not a beggar. He was a tent maker. He worked during the day. The word works and labors, when you read the manuscripts, you generally will find, in general, labors means what you do get some food on your plate during the day everyone has to work God doesn't like lazy people and um, you know we're always quoting here that's from the book of uh, Proverbs and furthermore Paul was not this is what we're not chargeable unto any of you we're not passing a collection plate here we're, that was against God's rules that was Yeshua Messiah our precious Savior specifically said do not take a begging bag with you you, you, you don't ask for money if the person if, if someone's teaching you accordingly then you should follow the biblical instructions on giving money but you don't ever give in to a beggar and Paul certainly was not chargeable to anybody he was a tent maker he worked all day man go ahead Tim ye are witnesses and God also how holy and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Listen, just um, just conduct yourself accordingly when you're um, as a Christian person, and you represent you represent our, our Savior Yeshua Messiah. And we have a standard here, and our standard is written in this Bible. And there's general rules on how to behave, and general guidelines. And actually, not even general. There's strict discipline rules and how you should conduct yourself accordingly. And as Paul did too. For example, if he wasn't out there begging for money, he was laboring all day with his bros. And he was making tents. And then he wasn't going to the bar and getting hammered and taking home some... All right, we'll just stop there. Go ahead, Tam. 11. As ye know how we exhorted and comforted, comforted and charged every one of you as a father doth his children this is discipline tough love this is how a, a, a real parent who loves their child gives tough love they don't just continually 
would be, uh, what's that word when someone assists someone at being? An enabler? Enabler. It, this is what we're saying here. We're not man pleasers. We're not always trying to, um, to, to make, God's word is not going to always make you happy. It's gonna it's gonna wake you up and God's gonna rattle your cage sometimes and you're gonna say, Well, I didn't know this, I didn't know that's because you've never been taught. Well you're getting taught now. And this is what Paul's saying here. He charged every one of you as a as a real father who loves your children or a mother that loves their children, they give them tough love. And they give them disciplined love and the child appreciates that much more than the sugary sweet just um void and without form, no substance. Go ahead, Tam. That ye would walk worthy of God, who hath called you unto his kingdom and glory. Okay, so there is a providence, there's a divine order of things, there's a process. And and what Paul's saying here, and what we learn in the Bible is first you repent and you get baptized, and then you 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 start to study the word. Christ came in the volume of the book, all of it, and that you would walk worthy of God who has called you. You've been called. You were called children of God, and we're called children of God. And children have, um, children have an inheritance, but you can't claim that inheritance until you become a man, woman, a man or a woman of God. So, um, there's a divine order of things, and uh, go ahead, Tammy. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Yeah, the word of God, not the word of men, not man's imagination, not man's traditions, not well, this is the way it is now, and times have changed, and, and all things were different back then. No, God's word is, was, is, and is forever. It's a standard, and it's a standard that we follow, a standard that we teach. And it's just actually God teaches through us. To whomsoever will, right, Tammy? Verse 14 of Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14, Tam. For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews. Big verse stop right now. This is huge. All right, so first off, this is an abbreviated lesson. This is a really big verse. There was 12 tribes, and one tribe was the brother Judah. Ten tribes split, and they became Ephraim and Manasseh, and they went over the Caucasus Mountains and settled Europe, Canada, the United States, like so. Two tribes stayed back, Benjamin and Judah, basically. All right. So when you're reading the Bible, you always come across, why did they separate Israel and Judah? Israel just became what was known as the twelve, or the twelve tribes, and they just called Israel the ten tribes, and Judah stayed back. Brother Judah is a brother. Now people that moved into the Judea area. As we're reading here, which in Judea also just started calling themselves Jews. It's like me and Tam are from Canada, but if we moved to Texas, would we be called Texans? Well, we would have every right to if we got a Texas driver's license and started doing business down there, but we're not really Texans. It's the same principle. So, what we have here, your answer to this verse, John 8, 44, you are of your father the devil. That's a big verse. What are you saying? Satan's children are walking on this planet? Revelation 2 9, Revelation 3 9. Those who say they are Jews but are not, but are of the synagogue of Satan. Revelation 2 9 and Revelation 3 9. These are three big verses to the key of David. Going back to the first prophecy, which we're just going to have to read. And of course, me and Tammy teach this, but Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. And I'll read in the general area. This is where Satan does his first utterance. This is where Satan starts talking. He starts talking in verse 1. And we go through, and you have to have this taught to you for understanding through someone, a remnant of truth. Which me and Tam will teach us someday. But 
And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, whatever you want to call him. He's the same dude, little horn, the Antichrist, the instead of Christ. And Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all. Above all cattle, above every beast of the field, and upon thy belly shall that go. And dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. That's just degradation. And Satan, everybody, we know. Ezekiel chapter 28, for example, is a detailed biography of who Satan is. Satan was the anointed cherub. Um, God created him in the full pattern. Gorgeous, beautiful, was, was God's best buddy. And then iniquity was found in him. And then he went and did this. And here is the verse 15. To you, Satan, God talking. I will put enmity between thee, that's you, Satan. I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. It, Christ, the anointed one, shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. What are you talking about? Bruise his head? Bruising your head is a mortal wound. And, of course, um, bruising the heel was just um, not a mortal wound. It's a vital part, and the heel's a lower part. So going back to Thessalonians, after we went through that, who are these Jews of John 8:44? Who are these Jews that um, in Christ Jesus, for they suffered things like our own countrymen, even, even as they have of the Jews. 15, the next verse, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets and have persecuted us and they please not God and are contrary to all men who are these people John 8 44 Revelation 2 9 Revelation 3 9 there's a verse in Jeremiah I forget right now but believe there's a thread that is well taught and we will do a topical lesson someday on who are these people they're not our brother Judah they're not brothers to um, the 12 patriarchs these were parasites that walk among the earth right now but all can come to repentance. And we're just going to leave that at that, Tammy. And you go ahead. I read that verse 15. And so go ahead and read verse 16, Tammy. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins alway. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. So... If you say fill up your sins all the way, that means eternal. You're filling up your eternal sins. Your wrath is to come upon to the uttermost. You write your own sentence. Everybody has a chance at repentance. The good, the bad, the ugly. We are called children of God as children. We have an inheritance pending. As I was trying to say this earlier, you must mature as a Christian to claim your inheritance. And your inheritance is true inner peace, salvation, eternal life. And, and all the blessings that God promises. And um, let's just carry on to 17, Tammy. Those were four big verses. And um, you just let that settle. And things you don't understand, you just file it away. And, and the Holy Spirit will allow you understanding as you pray and, and continue being a student of God's Word. Go ahead, Tammy, 17. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire yeah man read the books back they all got thrown in the clink go ahead tim 18. wherefore we would have come unto you even i paul once and again but satan hindered us yeah he spent 15 years in jail but you know what you got to read the book of acts and me and tammy teach the book of acts so um so Paul's just explaining that being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart. Like we're still in heart. This is true Christian love. We're still praying for you. It's the charity. It's the charisma that you have as a Christian person. Um, for a short time in presence, not in heart. And endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. We missed you. You know. When you start teaching the Bible and when you turn your life over to God or when you start studying the Bible, you can all of a sudden realize that you may not be as popular with certain people as you once were. People don't like it and uh, what, what we're saying here is 
you will find your true eternal friends. You will be find the many member body friends that we so desire. The superficial people will come and go. The people of the ways of the world who are, you know, just going after the money, the chase, the bigger boat, the house, the, the children decked out with every, um, what do you call those labels that people like? Brand names? <laughs> Designer labels. You, you know what? We, we go for designer labels. Tammy's the, uh, probably better at describing this. Anyways, um, 18. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Satan is not a fictional character, and he's not some dude running around in a pair of red underwear. You read Ezekiel chapter 28, and you review what Tammy and I have taught, or Paul has taught. We're just. We're just um, remnants of truth, and we've been studying, and we're deciding to teach what God's allowing us from verse 14 to 16, talking about who are the Jews. Why do people just hate the Jews? They misguided hatred for no reason. There is zero room for racism in the Bible. The Bible doesn't imply racism. It doesn't include hatred towards anybody, but it does tell you to be aware, to watch their spot. How to protect yourself and how to pray for these people that you don't particularly care for um, so Paul here you could read Acts 24 and you could find what he was doing in the clink and or in jail or whatever you want to call it um, you should read Acts 24 anyway 19 Tammy for what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming there's a lot of questions there maybe we should review them all or maybe I could just say these questions are the basic subject of first and second Thessalonians these precious letters from God through Paul penned by Paul to us all of us as individuals on an individual basis will we be judged and on an individual basis do we love Jesus Christ, our Savior, and learn what's going on, man? So, for what is our hope and joy, or crown of rejoicing? Are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? Like, how does the end time prophecy work? And, um, of course, we get told over and over again, it's very repetitive. And these questions are the basic subject of First and Second Thessalonians, and of course God answers them for us. Go ahead, Tim. 20. For ye are our glory and joy. Okay, go ahead, Tim. Oh, okay, wait. Don't pass over that. Who's your glory and joy? Um, you know, maybe one of your favorite people is, you know, in a bit of trouble, but you think he's cool. You know, he's making a lot of money, or he's just a, you know, I'll say badass. Or sure. Badass, or just someone you thinks really cool or a celebrity you're all infatuated with or who is your glory or joy your glory or joy is someone that you can have a two-way conversation about our savior Yeshua Messiah someone who's who's willingly has their heart and mind over to God our standard our what a refreshing time it is when we get to talk to people in the many membered body and know that their heart is in the same place there's nothing going on in the background well that we that we hope and that's that's our glory and joy let's just uh go on to um chapter three tammy second first thessalonians chapter three we just finished chapter two go ahead tammy verse one wherefore when we could no longer forbear we thought it good to be left at athens alone so that's where they went they were in athens um Again, see Acts 17, you should just read the book of Acts. Timothy joined Paul, him and Silas. Uh, they were sitting there in Athens. Um, just uh, They started ministries here and there. They were evangelists, but evangelists that left truth to be taught. They didn't stop at the milk of the word, which is you know, born again and saved and just love Jesus. That's the milk. You have to get the meat. But anyways, that's where they're sitting right now, too, Tammy. And sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God, 
and of our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. So, um, I can no longer forbear it, so I'd be left at. So, um, so what happens here is, um, Silas and Timothy joined Paul, and Silas agreed to dispatch Timothy to Thessalonia. And Paul and Silas were sent, like, you can, there was no email and stuff, think about it. He had to give the letter to a person, and they gave it to Timothy, and he took it to the Thessalonians. That's uh, an area or a country. If you get a biblical atlas, you can see where Thessalonia was. And this is to the Thessalonians, and Timothy's the dude. Go ahead, Dan. Three. That no man should be moved by these afflictions, for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. Like, afflictions, that's an understatement, if anything. These guys are walking around in these heathen areas trying to set up a new church. Trying, They just bulldozed with truth. Their whole belief system, which was based on traditions, gods they made up, whether it's the sun god or Saturn god or fish god or dog god, they had a god for everything. And in comes Paul with his apostles and disciples here, and, and they're setting up these churches. And believe me, it was no cakewalk. They were arrested, harassed, discriminated against, made fun of. They were thrown in jail. Go ahead, Tim, four. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass, and ye know. This goes for us. You know, all these things were written for examples for us in these times. There's, God didn't waste one single word. This is all lessons for us, and it will be no cakewalk being a Christian in this flesh age. You have to be ready to be to put your gospel armor on and stick up for what you know is right and what you believe in. How do you do that? You have to have a, a working knowledge of the Bible. Because as was written earlier, no Bible thumping, man. No taking a verse here and just start yelling it out and just acting like a fool. And we've all seen those people. And they do a lot more damage to the, the Christian name than um, any good. You'll lose superficial people in your life and you'll gain many member body people. But you have to earn it. And to earn it takes time and you have to study it. You have to earn it. You have to earn your inheritance. Go ahead, Tammy. For this cause, when I could no longer forbear, I sent to now to know your faith, least by some means the tempter have tempted you and our labor be in vain. So Paul's like freaking out. Not freaking out. Let's just settle down here, Tammy. Paul's just like going, I can't handle this anymore. I had to send Timothy over there to see what's going on with this church that we set down there in uh, Thessalonia. Because we know that Satan is the prince of the air. Ephesians 2.2. 2. Satan has the run of, run of it right now. Satan de facto in his, is being held by Michael. Um, Revelation somewhere, I forget. But Satan is the prince of the air. Ephesians 2 2. That means all his whole army, his whole office of demons, evil spirits, devils. He has authority because our Father allows it. This is a testing period to see who you really are. We were all born innocent of women. And now it's, this is a time to see what you're going to do. And God is judged. Deuteronomy chapter 32. All his ways are judgment. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. God knows your heart. He knows your what you're thinking and what your intentions are. Satan does not have that power. But he is the tempter. And he does have power to tempt you. And this is what's happened here. Paul wants to know. For fear by some means... The tempter, Satan, that's one of his names, had tempted you and our labor be in vain. That means we set up this church and we just want to make sure that God's word is being taught. That no traditions are being thrown in there. No um, no man-pleasing, like changing the doctrine of God, the precious word, just to please some people because they feel like acting in a certain way. And it seems cooler, it seems popular. Um, go ahead, Tammy. We're just going to read one more verse. But now, when Timotheus came from you unto us, 
and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that ye have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us, as we also to see you. Great news, Paul. Paul just got great news. It sounds like the hard work being God's servant is bringing back, and he brought back good news. So the word got back to Paul that this is not a waste of time. Even if one person was to come to repentance and get a working knowledge and love Jesus Christ and 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 carry on and and be a servant and a man, woman, child, child of God, it's a good thing. And um. So seven goes, therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in our affliction and distress by your faith. So in transferring these people from their heathen ways, it, it made us feel good. The Comforter, our Savior, Yeshua Messiah, that's one of his sacred names. That's the comfort that we get. Inner peace, knowing that everything's all right, knowing that we have victory in the end. It's guaranteed. But it's no cakewalk getting there. And nowhere in the Bible does it say, you become a Christian and now you can just sit back in that old lazy boy and everything's going to be easy going. No, man. <laughs> uh, eight. For now we live if ye stand fast in the Lord. How do you do that? Your free will, faith, love, and works. And we're going to stop there, Tammy, for today. And I uh, hope you enjoyed that. And please pick it up with us. And we continue on the first book of Thessalonians, and we'll be picking it up at verse 9. and Chapter 3, verse 9. Thanks.